Now you're a Christian. I am. But you don't look mentally ill to me. We used to play with Ouija boards after church. Yeah. Well, you know, tarot cards were cute. Did, did Jesus deal with people that had mental issues? My grandfather was a good man. I loved him. He loved me, but he he made some oaths and covenants in, in the Masons. Is this demonic activity or is it just a, a chemical imbalance? David Hevner Investigates is proud to bring you End Times Investigations, a new DVD series containing over eight hours of interviews, commentaries, and teaching on Illuminati and the New World Order, Satanism, miracles and healings, the Antichrist, and one world religion. Hi, I'm David Hevner, and I'm proud to bring you this brand new DVD collection, End Times Investigations. David reveals how the media is working hand in hand with the Antichrist system. Order now and receive this special DVD collection. Text bonus to 41444 or davidhevner.tv slash order. Call toll free 844-806-0006. Text bonus to 41444 or davidhevner.tv slash order. Call toll free 844-806-0006. Everybody, David here. Welcome to David Heavener TV. I have with me Miss Lynn Eldridge. Hi, Lynn. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, you're this welcome. Fun. Now, you're a Christian. I am. But you don't look mentally ill to me. Well, it's because I'm not. Oh, okay. I, I was lied to. Uh, explain that to me. Now, you, you're a Christian. You went to a, a, a church. You went to actually a big university, all right? Uh, I won't tell what it is, but it's got three syllables, three, you know, the, you had problems in school, in the university, emotional problems, but it seems like Christianity, Christians don't want to go there. They don't want to acknowledge the psyche of human behavior, which God created us all, right? Right. So what's that all about? Tell me. Well, I feel like we, we go to church on Sundays and we're, we're good kids, right? We want to represent Jesus well. Right. Um, and we, we it, it seems to bring shame uh, if you find out I've got some problems that I, I can't handle when Jesus is supposed to be the answer. So evidently there's something wrong with me. Right. No, wait a minute. If you had a physical problem, just like the woman in the Bible had a, 12 years in issue of blood, mm -hmm. um, you're in church, you have a physical problem. Uh, you got cancer, they'll pray for you, sure. right? You got a broken arm, they'll pray for you. But if you have a mental issue, right, uh, it's psychological, bipolar, they don't know what to do with that, right? Right. Um, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. But why? Why Why don't they know what to do? Um, I think we're too imprinted by the culture we're raised in, whether it be in America, the American church, this college, our, our families, because the way our families raise us, it, we're normal. Isn't that right? Okay, so they don't want to mess with, with human behavior when it comes to your mind, with the way you think. My question is, did Jesus deal with people that had mental issues? Well, in one of the translations, it might have been the King James, it said Jesus healed the lunatic. And I'm like, well, I qualify. <laughs> I want my healing. You know something, Lynn? I think the reason most Christians want to stay away from mental illness is because it's a reflection of, of who they are. Because we all have problems mentally. I don't care who you are. And don't you think maybe it's because some pastors don't want to deal with it for two reasons? One is they're afraid of it because maybe they have some issues or it's in their own family. Number two, there's someone out there writing big fat checks that are against opening up that can of worms. Well, everybody has issues where we don't need a savior. And, and we're well, on a journey with Jesus. So yeah. somewhere we have to learn how to think like he does if we want the mind of Christ. And um, we don't always have the tools. Yeah. For someone out there listening who's been struggling emotionally, bipolar, depression, um, what can you tell them? You, you know, they, they're Christians. They've gone to their pastor, they've gone to their parent, they've gone, and they don't seem to, it's very shallow. What can you tell them to do? Well, number one, I, I believe that the church only preaches part of the gospel, that the, the part for, for deliverance, you know, Jesus said, go cast out demons. Well, he's not talking about the people that want to keep them, you know, and, yeah. and can Christians have <clears throat> demons? Well, Derek yeah. Prince says they can have whatever they want. 
So yeah. um, the, the truth is I, I needed to learn about some things like generational curses. And I said, I don't believe in curses. And they said, well, do you think bipolar is a blessing? Why don't you put down your prejudice against words and you might get some freedom here. But the, mm -hmm. but the truth is I've got a lot of um, things. My, my grandfather was a good man. I loved him. He loved me, but he, he made some oaths and covenants in, in the Masons. Right. And he was hoodwinked. He was not a bad man. He was deceived. I've got American Indian blood. Right. We did some tribal things, I'm sure, my ancestors. And, and there are dedications to darkness. I mean, the world believes that. I wish the church did. Yeah. Lynn, I'm going to tell you something that few people know. It's in my new book. I was a social worker for years. I okay. dealt, I worked at uh, behavior modification, especially with children and forensics. I dealt with horrific, I'm talking her, children had, had committed horrific crimes. Now, here's my question to you. We're going to dive into this a little bit. Mental illness, emotional disturbance, is this demonic activity or is it just a, a chemical imbalance? How do you see that? Well, I think that it's, if... If you're in agreement with God, you get a blessed life and peace. When I come into agreement with the kingdom of darkness, I get torment. And so maybe I've inherited these thought patterns. Yeah. Maybe it's a bloodline issue. Maybe it's the way I think. Maybe it's where Jesus said, if you don't forgive, you'll open the door to the tormentor. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's, it's a daily choice. Yeah, it's a daily choice. The way I tell you my conclusion, and, and, and again, everyone has to listen to the Holy Spirit on this is that you can have a chemical imbalance. You can, right. But see, that's a weakness. That's a door that the devil can step through and take advantage and really do a number. And now you have demonic uh, oppression. Uh, if you're not a Christian, demonic possession, right? You were a Christian when you were going through this, right? But yet you were attacked demonically right. by demons. They didn't possess you. They oppressed you. Or did they possess you? I, I don't know. I really don't. If there was a, a pit bull in this room yeah. with rabies, right. we wouldn't spend a whole lot of time talking about where it is. Yeah. The, the, the truth is we want the answer. How right. do we get free from it? You're right. And I understand the, the debate. And, yeah. Um, meanwhile, I was sitting in a church pew dying. I don't want to talk about where it is. Yeah. I just want to eradicate it with the mind of Christ and I get the mind of Christ by thinking his thoughts and maybe I had a chemical imbalance that maybe when I think about things that are noble and peaceful and pure and holy and righteous yeah. and keep my eyes fixed on him yeah. then my brain heals because it, mental illness is not a life sentence the brain is plastic and neuroplasticity science yeah. proves that your brain can be restructured and reformed so mine was well, you're talking about generational curse. Yes. Uh, was it your grandfather? Uh, okay. Did he have mental illness? Um, I on it, both sides of my family. And is that the generational curse you're talking right. about? Okay. Yes. Gotcha. Now, this mental illness, and I, I'll tell you why I'm asking this question. Um, it, it, when it starts, you know, the fear, you did all these thoughts, and you have a chemical imbalance or whatever. Is this, when you say generational curse, is this a generational curse that where you're born through the blood? Or is it a generational curse where it's cursed through spiritual? In other words, let me back up. Your grandfather is Freemason. He was involved in some things. Right. Could that curse have been passed on to you? Not just because he was emotionally, mentally ill, but because he was involved in witchcraft. Right. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Is it bloodline? Yes. Yeah. Is it spiritual oppression as well? Yes. It is in all cases. It is. And I love your analogy. If if you have a pit bull in the room, why are you worried about where it is? We you wouldn't got, spend you much got, time no, on it. No, you're absolutely right. And I get caught up in this too much. But the reason I do is I have people come to me that that aren't Christians, and they they are taken over. Mm -hmm. They are. I, I and I, I have people that are Christians. And they're worried that they're taken over. Now, I don't want to go there because that's another interview. But, Lynn, I want to thank you for your stand you're taking for people that are suffering. Right. Because it's a dark room and it's a lonely road that people walk down. And I'm going to say this. I'm going to say, you talk about prejudice. You talk about 
social distancing from someone that has a mental issue, it, it's today. I understand. You know? There and, would be people that would run across the street, avoid talking uh, to me. I was the demoniac in the town. Right, exactly. Now I chase them down, tell them I love them, and ask them if I can pray for them. Now they really think I'm crazy. Are you okay now? I am. I haven't been on any psychotropic meds or seen any doctor for anything but like an antibiotic in 11 years. Wow. You, you, take, you take less drugs than I do. Probably than most people. Do. I don't take any. Well, how did how did that happen? How did uh, going from all kinds of uh, psych drugs to none? Well, when I got out of the mental institution in 2011, I, I ran into a, a woman that my mother used to be friends with when we were in the church. And meanwhile, she's got a bachelor's in psychology and a demon from Widener Leadership Institute, Doctor ministries and I went she said come into my healing room so right. every Monday I'd go in there and she'd say repeat after me I confess the sins of my ancestors my parents my own sin of a cult including right. fake Freemasonry American Indian um, we used to play with Ouija boards after church yeah well you know tarot cards were cute it, you open the door to all kinds of crazy stuff. absolutely but we don't believe that but was there a time that you were like the woman the issue of blood 12 years she touched the robe of Jesus you were instantly healed or was it over a, a process over a period of time when I was uh, running from the drug cartel as a 17 year old and ended up on a, a university campus of power God set me free instantly but I didn't know how to keep it so little by little the doors opened back up and the darkness came back into my thinking I don't know if it was in my body but I ended up leaving the church again as a quote defeated Christian which is an oxymoron isn't it wow you know we're talking to Lynn Eldridge here on David Heavener TV part one when we come back I'm gonna be asking Lynn about her experience with the drug cartel how in the world you ever got into that and number two, what was actually wrong with you? Would they diagnose you uh, as, hold on to that thought, we'll be right back. With what you're playing in The Last Evangelist, I think it really paints a picture of where we're headed. Um, I think some of the stuff that you portray in that particular series is absolutely some of the stuff we're going to see in the near future. Yeah, a brand new DVD uh of last evangelist you can get it right now uh it's limited collector's edition it's got the new episode on it along with band videos with me and michael lake and lisa havens uh, Sh sheila lazinski and uh well things that were just taken down because uh, they didn't like them but you get all this right now if you um call uh 844-806-0006 uh, or go uh text the word um chosen to 91999 or go to davidhevener.tv forward slash order. If, if you'd like to um, get involved with the ministry and uh, be a supporter, text the word chosen to 91999. We sure could use your help. And please don't forget my new books that are out, uh, True Power and uh, End Times Investigation. Uh, and it's the, you can get all this stuff uh, there at uh, davidhevener.tv forward slash order. Don't forget to sign up to davidhevener.tv. Hey everybody, David here. Now, if you're enjoying the show, would you please consider becoming a monthly partner? Help me bring God's word to a dying world. You know, they need to hear the truth. And your donation will help do that. Please, text the word CHOSEN to 91999. Or go to davidhevener.tv forward slash give or call 844-806-0006. God bless you.